to lecture 2 of cash flow statement so today we'll be looking at an example from page 379 of your book the question is asked us to prepare a statement of cash flow for the year ended 31 may 2015 using international accounting standard 7 format so that's what we're going to study so this is the question the directors of Yukita Private Limited uh, Company provided the following information uh, of financial position as on 31 May. So we have a financial position, statement of financial position. This is the statement of financial position for 2014 and 2015, ending at 31 May. So you have your assets listed out here, the current asset, total assets. Down here you have equity and liabilities. This is the equity. There is non-current libraries, current libraries, total libraries, total equity and liabilities. So this is your statement of financial position. And the non-current assets, uh, the details are given in note 1. If you look at note 1 here, the details of non-current assets are here. You have land and building at cost for both the years. The land and building has been revalued, uh, revalued by 3200. There is depreciation to debt. Depreciation to debt means your accumulated depreciation. So here you need to understand that depreciation has been uh, used under the provision for depreciation method. There is the carrying amount, machinery at cost, depreciation to debt, carrying amount, vehicle, and then there is additional information during the year ended 31 May 2015. Machinery which at cost uh, 1200 thousand dollars was sold for seven hundred fifty thousand dollars the depreciation charge on the machinery up to 31 May 2014 was dollar four eighty thousands no addition to the machinery was made during the year ended 31 May 2015 there was no disposal of lands buildings or vehicle during the year ended 31 May 2015 note 2 the summary of income statement for the year ended 31 May 2015 was as follows in the bracket uh, changes in changes in equity statement has not been used so you have uh, profit for the year before tax there is provision for purpose tax even paid increase in return earning for the year so this is the question given to us now based on this question we are supposed to prepare the cash flow statement so let us see how to make it so the solution would be something like this i have already made a solution so this is the format which we studied in lecture 1. The statement of cash flow for the year ended 31 May 2015. Up here is the heading of the company. First, we calculate cash flow from operating activities. Then, second, you calculate cash flow from investing activities. Third, you calculate cash flow from financing activities. You add them up. That's your net increase in cash and cash equivalents. This is the sum of A plus B plus C. And then, cash and cash equivalent beginning, we add it up then you get your result cash and cash equivalent at the end that's how we do so i'm going to teach you based on this solutions uh, so that you understand how each of them is done so in order to calculate cash flow from operation activities first we need to start from profit from operations so we need to search profit from operations in the question now if you look in the question uh, in the question you will notice that and uh, this is your seminar financial position. There is no profit from operation here. Obviously, it will be given in the additional quotient. Let's see. So, if you look in the additional quotient up here, down here you can find that in note 2, the summarized income segment for the year ended 31 May 2015 was as follows. Uh, changes in equity segment has not been used. So, statement of uh, changes in equity has not been used, but we have uh, information out here. So, we need uh, profit from operation but here is given profit for the year before tax so profit for the year before tax you know this is obtained after deducting you know interest from profit from operation so basically what i'm trying to say is when we make the income statement uh, it looks something like this So the income statement, uh, while we calculate the income statement, what happens is, uh, if you remember your format, from gross profit, if we deduct less expenses. 
so in gross profit when we deduct the expenses I'm just going to put an assumption here suppose the gross profit is 100 and the expenses is let's say 40 then you get a 60 as profit uh, from operation so from profit from operation uh, we deduct the finance cost remember this is the format we studied in our limited company accounts so we deduct finance cost and finance cost is composed of your preference dividend one is your preference dividend there are two things one is your preference dividend just a reminder so preference dividend is taken as a, a component of finance cost there is your preference dividend and then the second is interest on long-term loans so interest on loans you can say long-term loans interest on long-term loans or you can say normally here interest on debentures because debenture is a long-term loan so interest on loan or you can say debentures so here we'll have to subtract finance cost and let's assume that as suppose 10 as an assumption that when you deduct this you get you get profit before tax as 50 now in this question now this uh, 1112 is your profit before tax this is your PBT profit before tax so here what you need to do is you need to add back interest to get profit from operation so we need to add back to get the 60 so it means what you're going to do here is so this 11 uh, 2 is given to us so we are going to find out what is the interest amount and add it back to get profit from operation that's what we are basically going to do so if you look here in the solution I have already done it that's in work number one here see so profit before tax 1112 is given to us this is in thousands you want to pick that up there and then you need to add back interest now this interest is uh, you know you need to figure out from the question so I'm going to show a way to get this interest part so here if you look up in your non-current liabilities if you look up here there is 8 percent debentures 1200 you can see there so both are same so you don't need to worry about it so all you need to do is calculate 1200 into 8 percent this is into out here you get 96 as the interest so that's the interest for the year so if you add these two up you get profit from operation so that's how we compute it profit from operation so based on that now if you look at the cash flow statement this 1208 has been computed through this working node so this is how you get this first adjustment if it's not given directly to us now after doing that we need to add up adjustment for depreciation so we need to compute depreciation of all the non-current assets so here you can figure out here depreciation there's land and building 650 machinery 660 uh, vehicle 200 this total is added to 1510 we need to add back depreciation that is your non cash expenses so now we're going to show how to compute each one of them so before i do that i will uh, erase this off <clears throat> so this is our question out here see we need to calculate the depreciation for land and building machinery vehicles investment all of these so we need to make a laser for each of this now uh, let us look at uh, the additional question as well what is saying regarding depreciation so if you look in the additional question up here it's given note one there is the notes given out here so what we do is we will make each of the lasers individually so let us start off with land and building so this is your working note to land and building this is your laser land and building so land and building is your asset so in the debit side bra opening balance will come to the debit side bd that's your brought down you have 27815 now this has been obtained from okay let me hide this part and this part 
this way here see you can see the land and building opening balance 2785 that's what has been uh, put out here 27815 then regarding closing balance this closing balance what we need to see here is here is the closing balance here the cost plus you need to add up the revaluation revalued amount so revaluation amount should also be added up because asset has been uh, revalued up by 200 so you add this two you get 34220 as the closing balance mm. and the amount by which the asset has increased revaluation amount we need to put in the debit side so you write revaluation reserve and put 3200 because the asset is being increased by this portion so this opening balance understood the closing balance you have understood then the revaluation reserve you need to increase by 3200 so that's your planning building account debit revaluation reserve on credit so when you do that, it also hits the revaluation reserve account. See, so is your revaluation reserve account in the credit side land and building 3200. This is how it hits both lasers. Now after this, what we do is we the total is 34220 out here. Here 34220. So the difference amount is a missing figure. That's your purchase. That's what has been obtained here. So the next one we calculate our provision for depreciation on land and building. So to calculate provision deficit on land and building, first we start off with opening balance. Now the opening balance is given to us up here. So let me just hide this. There. The uh, depreciation to date is your accumulated depreciation, or you can say provision for depreciation. 9600 is the opening balance, 10 to 5 is closing balance. 9600. So if you look here in the work note to 9600. Is the opening balance remember that provisions opening balance comes in the credit side and the closing balance comes in your uh, debit side one one zero two five zero so the missing figure goes in your income statement that's a depreciation missing figure 650 that's how it works out so this is how you make the land and building you know land and building at cost the provision deficit account and the revaluation reserve now there is no sale of land and building out here so we don't need to make disposal account and remember that we are making I mean we are calculating depreciation based on the accumulated uh, depreciation method or you can say provision for depreciation method or you can say disposal uh, account method so let me now let me show how this will have an impact on the cash flow statement so in the cash flow statement see this there's a purchase so when purchase happens there's outflow of cash so this is going to go in our investing activities we'll have a minus out there so let me show you in the cash flow in the section of cash flow from investing activities you have purchase of land and building work note 2 out here see 3205 is your outflow so it's in the bracket so this is where you need to put this you need to remember that so this is done and then the depreciation is your non-cash expenses which we need to add back in the uh, profit from operations so this 650 if you look up here it's here they see and I'm building 650 so this is the uh, real reason for why we are making the ledgers we need to calculate the missing figures there so that's understood for walking note number two so back to question so we have done for land and building now second we need to do for machinery in the same technique so machinery i've got in working on number three this is machinery account there so as normal machinery's opening balance comes in the debit side opening balance you put there so closing balance will come in the credit side but let's have a look in the question do we have both the data so you look at the machinery account here 6500 you have but you don't have the closing balance do we have so no so that will be you know computed as your missing figure so this is going to be your missing figure in a while it's not given to us if you look up in the question there is no closing balance you have opening balance is given but the closing balance is not given <coughs> so so machinery cost now in the additional information there's disposal of machine during the year ended 31 may 2015 and machinery which had originally cost twelve hundred thousand dollars was sold for seven fifty thousand dollars so here twelve hundred 
this is the cost so you need to uh, reduce the machinery account at its cost remember this is at cost so machinery account all the data here must be at cost so this is your opening balance at cost this is also at a cost so when you put this disposal account 1200 down here the missing figure comes to 300 that's how this has been obtained <coughs> The depreciation on machinery up to 31 May 2014 was 480. So this is for the sole portion. So now we can also make the uh, disposal account at the same time. So this is disposal account, the disposal of machinery. In the debit side, you need to put the original cost of the machinery that is 1200. It's come here 1200. Then in the credit side, you put all reason for is decrease like. It's for sales when you sell the asset is going to decrease so it's coming the credit side you have bank account debit 750 is being sold then you need to also deduct the amount of depreciation that's given 480 amount here you can see there the depreciation charge on the machinery is 480 for the machinery that has been disposed of so provision for depreciation you write you get 480 here and then the missing figure is our profit on disposal this is how you get this, this is your missing figure so that's done then we make the provision for depreciation on machinery so you have your opening balance in the credit side 3130 this is given up here if you look in the question 3130 notice that we don't have closing balance here so you will have to calculate this as a missing figure so 3130 is here and in the debit side we need to deduct depreciation on disposed asset so 480 is the depreciation disposed asset so you write disposal account and then there's 480 here that's deducted and the closing balance uh, this one you need to you know calculate it so how this has been done is very simple here at the end of the year we have machinery at cost 300 less this is the carrying amount or you can say book value that's given in the question now up here is not given anyway here also is not given if you read down here it's not given anyway but if you look in the first page of the question you will notice that there is the data for that so here in the machinery sections here 19990 notice that these are all book values these are not at cost so that means at the year in 1990 is your book value so if this is the book value cost minus book value is the closing uh, provision for depreciation so that's how this 3310 has been obtained so after this you get this missing figure 660 as the depreciation for the year for provision for depreciation on machinery that's how we do now let's see how these you know impact the cash flow statement starting from machinery so if you look in the machinery account at cost there is nine uh, here you don't see any bank or cash or depreciation so this will have no impact it will have no impact on the cash flow now if you go down here in disposal account there is a bank out here see sold so when you sell it there's going to be inflow of cash so there's going to be inflow of cash in your cash flow you can go down to your investing activities sale of machinery 750 is here there see 750 it has come here oh no that so 750 was here mm, 750 there and then this your profit the profit is your non-operating income so the non-operating income has to be deducted that's your outflow so if you look up here Profit on disposal of machine work note number 3, 30 has been deducted because it is your non-operating income. Because here we need to show only operating income. Hmm. The reason why it's subtracted is because initially uh, while calculating your profit from operation it would be added. So to remove it we are subtracting it. That's the reason. The real thing is there is no out of out flow of gas. So it's actually to you know uh, get uh, your cash flow from operation operating activities that's the reason why we are subtracting it so that's done now you go to here in the provision for depreciation of machinery 
there is your depreciation 660 hmm? that's the depreciation for the year now this depreciation we need to you know add back because it is non cash expenses you can see our machinery is 660 that's how it has been done out here so that's done with number work note number three so let us go to work note number four so working note number four we'll have to see the question again so working note number four we're going to deal with uh, vehicles so vehicles we have 1650 as opening balance yeah 1650 closing balance we have 1750 so no big deal and then the difference if you look down here regarding vehicles there was no disposal of land and building of vehicles so there's no disposal of vehicles means the missing figure obviously is your purchase your bank there's outflow so outflow means under your investing activities you'll have to show minus in your cash flow you can have a look at it here investing activities purchase of vehicle 100 minus here is spin down outflow so that's how it's going to work out yeah. then provision for depreciation you have uh, depreciation opening balance 600 there's a 600 here closing balance is given 800 800 here so the missing figure is depreciation that you need to add back in profit from operation so let's have a look at cash flow here vehicles depreciation of vehicle 200 added back so that's how it has been done for uh, number four hmm. so now here what we just learned is we studied uh, we learned how to calculate 650 660 and 200 as done so when you add this up you get 1510 as the uh, you know as total depreciation that is add, added back so profit and disposal of machinery we have done this is also done and then down here process of land and building done machinery and done vehicle done so let us look at the question now one more time so what have we missed so back in your question so if you look up here in your question you need to go serially land and building we have uh, you know done work note everything uh, land and building done machinery done vehicles done now investment if you look at investment out here uh, investment has increased from 5050 to 6000 so the difference amount by which it has in uh, increased means we have bought investment so there will be outflow of cash so you can simply subtract this and so in outflow outflow or you can prepare a laser as I'm going to show you let's go to number five number five okay so this is your investment accounts here opening balance 5050 the closing balance 6000 the difference is your purchase bank so 950 is going to be outflow in your cash flow if you look in your cash flow now here down here under the heading of cash flow investing activities you have purchase of investment work note 5 1950 sorry 950 outflow so that's how work note 5 has been done so this is our original question we have done for investment so this is that now let us go down serially for current assets there's inventory trade receivable and cash and cash equivalents remember that we don't need to do anything with cash and cash equivalents so this current asset uh, we need to now analyze it so the technique in calculating your cash flow operation there was a, a heading out there for changes in working capital in working capital comprises of current asset and current liabilities current asset and current liabilities so these two things will be seen so if there is decrease in current assets decrease in current asset you will have to add it that's what we studied and increase in increase in current liabilities also we'll have to add it 
if it doesn't uh, satisfy these two rules we will subtract it so that's how we'll see now let's see in inventory if the inventory is increasing we'll have to add it this is plus so both plus so if you look down here inventory has been you know it has increased not decreased so since it has increased we need to show it less by the increase portion so if you subtract this minus this and you will get up again okay, which right so in the cash flow you will have something like this here yeah, increase in inventories that is 270 so the amount it has increased by 270 you will have to show it subtract minus so again back to your question now trade receivable has also increased so this also you will have to do less because it is also your current asset so less by the increase amount if you look in the cash flow here there is your um, increase in trade receivable 300 less see, in this portion now let's have a look at okay inventory and trade was done so cash and cash you don't need to do anything about it so let's go down to current liabilities trade payables has increased here yeah? increase in trade current liabilities you need to add so since the trade payable has increased we need to add back the increase portion so increase in trade payables one success it's been added back that's how it has come you can pause the video and ch check if you think I'm going too fast use your calculators to verify what I'm saying is correct or not so trade papers understood so tax libraries you don't need to do it uh, you like we make a separate laser for that so that's done with your working capital now after that what we do is now let's have a look at the cash flow back to cash flow so here what we have done is now we get cash flow from operating activities by simply you know adding this up the bracket means you need to subtract so 1208 plus 1510 minus 30 minus 270 minus 300 plus 160 you get 2286 that's your cash flow from operating activities now here there are two things which we need not we should not forget that one is your interest paid and tax paid you need to deduct here make sure you remember this too so interest paid is you know working note number one here you see the interest someone where we are calculated it was the interest on the debenture 1200 percent 96 so that's our flow so here is minus then tax paid now tax paid uh, it's in your work note 6 I'm going to explain this how this has come so tax paid in the list of current libraries the opening balance of tax paid is 380 so it comes in credit side the closing balance is given 420 this is given there now I'm going to show this so if you look down here tax liabilities 380 this is the opening balance here 380 420 closing balance and then this uh, tax provision for the year is given in your additional question there down here if you look here see provision for corporate tax 420 that's the tax provision for this year so that comes here so when you add this up the difference comes to 380 that's your missing figure which is assumed paid so normally what happens in a tax system is we pay the payable of previous year in the current year so 380 is the payable of previous year which is being paid in current year 380 so without making this laser you can simply understand that you know like suppose in the question here you see you have tax libraries 380 and 420 you can assume 380 is being paid directly because this is of the previous year you can also make the laser if you like so this one no number c so let's have a look at the cash flow so that's how the tax paid 380 has come here so now from 2 to 8 6 if you subtract 96 and 380 you get 1810 as net cast flows from operating activities the bracket in if there's the negative sign it means net cash used from operating activities since it's positive it means net cash flows from operating activities so that's your number a which means we have completed cash flow from operating activities now second portion we are going to learn how to calculate cash flow from investing activities 
so investing admin is uh, we have already calculated this land process of land and building so process of land and building was in a work note 2 i explained earlier so if you see here here's your 3250 when you purchase this outflow so this goes here then the sale of machinery in work note number three sale of machinery if you see here there's 750 sales so that's your inflow 750 here then in work note four there's purchase of vehicle purchase of vehicle here see they can see 100 outflow so let's come here outflow minus then in your work note number five there's the investment that's been purchased 950 there's your outflow here it has come so here now we do add subtract and then you get this 3505 and negative so there's outflow of uh, you know there's a negative cash flow in investing activities so it means net cash used from investing activities you have 3505 now it's very simple to calculate cash from investing activities it's all related to your non-current assets so all you need to see is your concern lasers whether non-current asset has been bought or purchased sorry whether it's been bought or sold when we sell non-current assets there will be inflow of cash positive like 750 here when you purchase non-current assets there's going to be outflow so 3205 here this way so uh, for non-current assets what you need to remember is the depreciation amount should be adjusted up here here in profit from operation and when there's profit or loss on sale of non-current asset that should also be adjusted up here profit from operation only the purchase or sale amount should be adjusted here in the cash flow from investing activities so it's very simple so we have number b complete now we go to cash flow from financing activities <clears throat> so to understand cash flow from financing activities we'll have to look at the question back to question so let me hide this so here we'll have to see in the equity and non-current liability section so equity here you can see your ordinary shares here ordinary shares has increased from 1 to 100 to 1 to 600, 600 so increase in ordinary shares means shares have been issued so when you issue shares there's going to be inflow of cash so this has to be added the difference amount you have share premium here share premium has also increased it means share premium was collected on issue of shares so that's also inflow you need to add the difference amount the increased amount hmm. and then the revaluation reserve out here has increased from nothing out here uh, but you don't have to worry about revaluation reserve because revaluation reserve does not result in inflow or outflow of cash add this to first ordinary shares and share premium as i said the difference amount will be shown as inflow you can pause the video and use your calculator and find the difference amount and if you look in the cash flow statement here see issue of shares so 500 has increased by 500 increase in share premium 1500 you put this way this is your inflow you can combine both of these and keep in one line it doesn't make a uh, difference that's it that's your increase in <coughs> share premium okay back to question normally shows your dividend uh, being paid so let's look at node 2 so it's not given here node 2 is an additional question so here is your node 2 this is your summary of your return earning how it has been obtained so profit for the year before tax we have 1120 your corporate tax we have adjusted up here so no worries so dividend paid 300 this dividend paid has to be you know it has to be shown as outflow in your financing activities so 300 minus in your cash flow the dividend paid 300 you need to do this so return earning is used to calculate your uh, dividend paid so with that done now if you look at the question you might be thinking of the debenture as well so you also need to look at the non-current liabilities the debentures has neither increased nor decreased so we don't need to do anything about it had the debentures been increased suppose it is 1200 to 1500 it means increase in issue of debentures so the 300 portion you'll have to add it if in case it was given in question so this is this has nothing to do out here current libraries we have done so that's done with all of this so back to your cash flow now so we have net cash 
from financing activities 1700 positive by solving this part now after this what we do is we write net increase in cash and cash equivalent and then you add a plus b plus c so a is your cash flow from operating activities b is from your investing and c is your from financing so if you add them up this 1810 minus 3505 plus 700 you get positive cash flow is 5 so there is net increase in cash equivalent by dollar 5 10, 000, $5, 000. so in that we need to add cash and cash equivalent at beginning 278 now this is given in your question 278 let's have a look at 278 so here this is the cash and cash equivalent 278 in the beginning of the year 278 this is your opening cash and cash equivalent this is your closing cash and cash equivalent so we are going to add 278 in the cash flow so if you add 278 to 5 you get 283 and remember that this 283 is the uh, means to check whether your answer is wrong or right so this 283 must be equal to your cash and cash equivalent in the question so let's have a look whether it's equal or not so here see there is 283 so when we added 5 plus 278 it was 283 so that means our solution is correct that's how you understand it so that's how we prepare the whole uh, cash flow statement i hope you understood it um, you can go to the video one more time and if you have any questions you can let me know so saying this i will say thank you